Hello, math makers. Thank you for coming for part two of subtraction within 1000. In our last lesson, we worked at just doing tens and hundreds. Today, we're going to work on subtracting on an open number line um, and seeing how that works. We're going to do it two different ways, adding up or counting back. Both ways work. Um, so if you're not sure which one to use, use the one you get correct. So before we get started practicing that, though, I do want to go over our math terms that I told y'all we would review every time. So let's go over our math terms. When we're subtracting, we have the subtraction problem. A subtraction problem, any math problem, is called an equation. The equation is how you solve it. So we have a number here, 42 minus 16 is 26. Uh, usually the larger number or the first number in a subtraction equation is the menu end. The number we're subtracting is called the subtrahend, and the answer is called a difference. If it's a word problem, you might see some of these terms in it. Read these with me. Difference, less than, takeaway, minus, fewer, left over, have left, remain, minus again, and how many more. So if you see any of those words in a word problem, it typically means to subtract. Next, these are our new terms for this unit. We have the word less than. If a number is less than another number, it's smaller. For example, 123 is less than 321. It's smaller than that number, so it's less than. Greater than. If a number is greater than another number, it is larger than it. For example, 500 is greater than 200. It's bigger, so it's greater than that number. Another term, decrease. If numbers decrease, they get smaller. These numbers decrease. 500, 400, 300, 200, 100. They decrease. They get smaller as you go. And of course, regroup. When you regroup, you rearrange to form the different groups. For every 10 ones, there's one 10. For every one 10, there's 10 ones. For every 10 tens, there's 100. And for every 100, there would be how many tens? 10. That's right. And in lesson number one, I showed you how regrouping would help us solve that, a subtraction question. We also have place value. We have a number here, 523. It's a three-digit number. It's made up of three numerals, three digits. Um, in a number, we have the place value. We have three ones, which tells us there's three ones, two tens, which makes 20, five hundreds, which makes 500. So we have the number 523. We'd write it just that same way, 523. If I broke it up into expanded form or expanded notation, it'd be 500 plus 20 plus 3. See, 500 plus 20 plus 3. Now, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add up. We're going to do two adding up, two counting back. So I want to show you both ways so that you understand how we're doing it in school, in class. So when you're adding up, you start with the subtrahend, the smaller number, and you add up to the menu end. You're adding up. So we would start with the subtrahend, 235, and we were adding up to the menu end. So what we're going to do is we're going to start counting to get up to that number. We're going to add up. Usually when we're dealing with numbers that are less than 1,000 but are greater than hundreds, we're going to start with jumps of 100 because that's just kind of easier to jump with. And I want to see how close I can get to this number without going over. So I'm going to add 100. If I add 100, that makes 335. I can still go. I'm going to add 100 again. 435. I still haven't gotten there. I'm going to do it again. Now I have 535. Can I do it again? I can't because it would be 635. That's too much. Now, you may have been able to do all 300 in your head and said to yourself, 235, let's see, 335, 435, 535, that's 300, that's 300s. You may not have had to do three steps. That's okay. Um, next, we're going to start adding our 10s. 535 plus 10 is 545. Again, can't add any more 10s because they might get too big. And then I go from 545 to 547, it's 2. Now, we have to add our jumps, and that's going to give us the difference, the answer to our question. So we have 300 plus 10 plus 2, which makes 312, and that makes our answer 
312. We add it up. So when you add the jumps we made, it gives you the difference, which is the answer to a subtraction question. Let's do one more. Adding up again, 687 minus 549. Again, we start with the subtrahend, 549, and we go to the menu end, 687. We're going to add up again. So again, we're going to make a big jump first if we can. We're going to do a jump of 100. I couldn't do more than that because if I add another 100, it's 749. That's too big. I can't do it, so I can just do one jump. So now I'm going to start doing my 10s. If I add 10, it's 659. Another 10, 669. Another 10, 679. Can I do another 10? It'd be 689. That's too many. Now, on this one, I'm going to add 1 to get to 680 because that just makes an easier jump for me. And now I can add 7. Now, I did have three 10s. That's 30. Again, you could have, you might have been able to do that in your head. You may have stopped right here at 649 and gone. 659, 669, 679. That is three tens. 10, 20, 30. I could have just jumped 30. And then I have a 1 and a 7, which makes an 8. Again, I'm going to add my jumps. 100 <clears throat> plus 30 plus 8. If I add the jumps, it gives me the difference. That's 138, which means 687 minus 549 equals 138. All right, now let's count back. When you're counting back, you start with the menu end, the larger number, and you count back the amount of the subtrahend. We're not trying to get to the subtrahend, we're just counting back that much. So I'm going to start 786, and when we subtract, our numbers decrease, they get smaller. So we're going to go ahead and put that on the larger end of a number line. And I'm going to look at 124. That tells me what my jumps should be. I'm going to jump 100, 20, and 4. This is why knowing expanded notation is so important. So if I jump 100 first, because we did 100 yesterday, we know that makes 686. Now I'm going to go ahead and break 20 into two tens. You might be able to do it in a 20, that's fine. But if you see, if I break it into two tens, that makes 6, 700, 676, 666. That's that jumping backwards by tens we practiced in lesson one. You might have been able to do that as a whole, 20, and done two tens, 686, 676, 666, and just done that easily. If you could, that's great. Um, if you couldn't, break it up. Feel free to do that. That's 20. Now I'm going to subtract my four, which gets me to 662. Now when you count back, the number you stop on is the difference, which is the answer in the equation, which means 786 minus 124 equals 662. All right, let's do one more. 953 minus 325. Again, counting back. When you're counting back, you start with the menu in, the larger number, count back the amount of the subtrahend, the smaller number. I'm going to go ahead and place my 953 towards the end of my number line. I'm going to break 325, 320 and 5, and then I'm going to know my jumps are going to be 320 and 5. So I'm going to jump my 300 first. 900 minus 300 is 600, so that'd be 653. And of course, that's 300 jumps. 953 minus 100, 853, 753, 653. That's why that works. Next, I'm going to jump 20. And I know I'm just two tens from 50 makes 30, which makes 633. Again, that's two tens, 653 to 643 to 633. And then I'm going to jump backwards five. I would probably break that five up into a three and a two, but you can just count backwards if you want to. Um, and the reason I do that is because it makes it easier. So 633 minus 5 would be 632, 31, 30, 29, 28. So I land on 628, which means 953 minus 325 equals 628. And that is how we count back. So in this lesson, what we looked at today was adding up 
to, on a number line to solve a subtraction question or counting back to solve a subtraction question on an open number line. Either way works. Both ways work. Choose the one that's best for you and then succeed. Thanks for joining me today. See you next time.